Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 17th. My goodness, January is more than half over. Just a blink of an eye since it was New Year Day and here it is the 17th already. Time is just flying by. I am just uh, lighting up some haunted bookshop in my Europe. Wonderful tobacco. Wonderful tobacco. You know, if you don't if you don't have a near a pipe, you're you're not you're not pipe smoking correctly. No, that's that that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> that but that's kind of what I've been thinking about this week and and what I wanted to talk about today. So I should have double checked this before I started the video. I'll I'll put a correction in here if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly certain it was OBX uh, who did a video a week or two ago talking about uh, snobbery in pipe smoking and it's a really good video his point is completely different from my point but it got me thinking so I'll link below to that video and if it wasn't OBX I'll, I'll correct it I'm, I'm sorry but I'm fairly certain it was now he was he was having a a pipe around a, a relative that didn't know he was a pipe smoker and the relative made a comment something like you know so you're a snob or, or something like that and you know so he was he was talking about that aspect of it but it got me thinking about you know there is there is a a, a sense of snobbery sometimes and I want to be careful here because I think it's it's well intentioned and it's uh in no way, I think it's just the natural response, I guess, is, is what I'm, I'm getting at. It's, it's not like anybody's sitting there saying, well, I'm going to start being a snob. But it's more just kind of the stuff naturally evolves. When you do something like pipe smoking uh, and like so many other things, where there's not really a science to it, you know, we we pretend that we understand how these pipes work and how airflow and all that. We have no idea. And, and for the most part, the world doesn't care because there's so few of us. So we're never going to understand pipe smoke in the way that we understand other things. And when you're when you're existing in that vacuum and everybody's trying to do the same thing, people start developing superstitions and. Frankly, that's what they are. They're superstitions. And I've got them, and you've got them. Um, you know, so I pack. I don't use any packing method. But if you, if you put a gun to my head and said, what packing method did you use? Um, I use the one, two, three method. Or, you know, the, I was taught, pack like a child, pack like a woman, pack like a man. I know it's politically incorrect to say that. But I don't care. Um, I don't consciously think, okay, here's the child. And here's, I just developed the rhythm to, that's how I stuff this stuff, the, the pipe tobacco in. And then I draw through the pipe, and everything seems fine most of the time. Rare occasions I'll go, oh, that's too tight, and I'll have to loosen it up or unpack it and repack it. But, you know, to go and say, if you're not using the one, two, three method or the child, woman, man method, you're you're not you're not smoking right, you're not doing it right. That would be crazy, because obviously I don't even use it. Um, there's the air pocket method and the Frank method, and you know all these sort of attempts to do a better job or to. I I think the guys that that started this stuff really were trying to understand it more than more than trying to improve, you know, make a better mousetrap. And that's all good. You know, it, it, it's great to, to experiment and play around. 
But if I discover that, you know, if I pack and I only push on the left side and make sure that the left side is packed harder than the right side, that gives me the perfect smoke. Uh, that would happen, but it would be ridiculous for me to, to, to say, well, if you don't pack with the left side harder than the right side method, you're, you're, not, a, you're not a real pipe smoker. You don't, know how, you don't know what you're doing. And no one's saying that. No, no one is saying that. But, you know, what if you say, you know, if, if, you, if you don't, if you're not smoking, if you're not smoking, I'll, I'll pick something you can't, you can't smoke. If you're not smoking McClellan Virginias, you don't know what pipe smoking is all about. I've heard people say that it's been years, um, and it hasn't. It wasn't on YouTube, but I, but I have definitely had people say that to me, and they were wrong. And I, I, it took me a long time to figure out that they were wrong. Um, you know, there was I've I've told you my smoking story many times, you know, but I I went from Captain Black to a lot of Kia to Burley, and I never got Virginia. And it's only recently, you know, like in the past 10 years that I actually, well, maybe maybe 12, I, I don't know. But the Virginia, I really understood Virginia. And part of the reason I never got them for such a long time was these Nimrods telling me that, it, that McClellan made the best Virginias and those. Well, McClellan didn't agree with me, he never agreed with me. And I know they're they're wonderful. They they made some great blends, and and there's a few of them that I that I did enjoy, but not their their straight Virginias. I just they never agreed with me. I've had other straight Virginias, and I I could name a few. Um, uh, GLPs Union Square is a great example. Um, uh, Old Virginia Flake, the 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 SG blend is is a great example. Uh, I, I could list others. So I've had Virginias that, that have been just you know, straight Virginias, no no Perique, no, that have been just wonderful tobaccos, and I enjoy smoking them. Not McClellan. But yet, every time I'd go to, I'd say, well, let me try another Virginia. It would be McClellan because I was told that that was the thing that I should be smoking. Um... If you don't smoke custom built, you're not a real pipe smoker. If you don't smoke a Grebo, you're not a real pipe smoker. If you don't smoke a Radice, you're not a real pipe smoker. If you don't smoke a Dunhill, you're not a real pipe smoker. It's, it's a load of bull. You can smoke anything you want. You can, you, you can, you can make a pipe out of a, out of a, I don't know. I went down, I went down a road there and didn't know where to. I was going to say out of a broomstick and a soda straw, but that, that seemed a little bit silly. Uh, yeah, but corn cob. You know, you, you could make your own corn cob out of a corn cob and a piece of reed. If you enjoy it, then you're a pipe smoker. You don't have to, you know, it just, it's silly. But that message sometimes comes across. You know, these nirups are the finest pipes I've ever smoked. And if you're not smoking one, you're you're missing out. Okay, you know, that's that's not the same thing as saying if you're not smoking this, you're wrong. But someone might hear it that way. And why do I care about this? We live in a world where the vast majority of people are not smoking pipes. We are seeing the erosion of... Uh, the availability of the things we need to smoke pipes. So we may well have lost Carter Hall, which has been, you know, a mainstay of, of our pipe smoking for many, many years. And it may be gone now because there's not enough of us. Snobbery whether it's real or perceived, is going to mean there's fewer of us. And the fact that there's people out there in the world that think that way 
makes our job harder because we have to be ambassadors of pipe smoking. We have to go out and show people that, that we're doing this. You know, don't be afraid to smoke in public. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to people. I've, I, I've never had a bad pipe smoking experience in public. Uh, I've had people complain about cigars, uh, and that, you know. But any time I've been smoking a pipe in public and someone has talked to me, it's always been about fond memories and grandfathers and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, we, we got to be ambassadors of pipe smoking. And to do that, we, we need to not only be ambassadors when we're out, you know, walking down the street smoking a pipe, or sitting in the park smoking a pipe, but when we're, when we're telling our friends about our hobby, when we're teaching a new person about the hobby, uh, you know, the first rule always should be smoke what you like and like what you smoke. And the second rule should be, if it's working for you, you're doing it right. And if you can find a way to combine those two together and only have one rule, I'd be a happy man. So somebody comes to you and says, I'd, I'd really like to get interested in pipe smoking. What do you, what do you think I should do? Um... Think about how you got into pipe smoking. And you probably didn't do it right. You probably, you know, most people have this story about they bought a basket pipe or they bought a corn cob pipe and they bought some aromatic blend. It's usually a cherry blend and they got tug bite. Um, and yet for some reason they persevered and today they're, they're a pipe smoker. That's a very common version of the uh, life of a pipe smoker narrative. So, imagine how many people do that and don't persevere. It, it's probably a, a surprising number. You know, my my dad uh, had a pipe when I was growing up. I never saw him smoke it. I asked him about it once, and I was still pretty young. And he said he tried it, but uh, it didn't agree with him or something like that. And he was a two-pack-a-day cigarette smoker for a large number of years. You know, he quit... Uh, gotta be like 25, 30 years ago he just stopped smoking and uh, he, he hasn't had a cigarette since but he was he was thinking the pipe might be something that could get him off of it or whatever and it didn't agree with him well, what does that mean? how many pipe smoke, how many potential pipe smokers out there have a gray bow sitting in their, their drawer or have a corn cob pipe that they've thrown away because they just didn't get the right advice. So how do you give the right advice? That's what this really comes down to. How do you avoid being that pipe smoking snob? Whether it's intentional or subconsciously. Because uh, you know how you like to smoke a pipe. Everybody does, right? We all have our own superstitions that we've developed. How do we tell this new person, whether they be somebody watching us on YouTube or somebody that we met at the, the pipe shop or somebody that we meet in the park or somebody at work or whatever, how do we tell them how to get stuff? Well, the truth is even me giving you a, an outline is, is me doing what I'm telling you you shouldn't do, right? But I guess the most important thing is be honest and try to understand that their experience is not necessarily going to be the same as yours. So don't tell them, well, you got to get a corn cob pipe and you got to get a pack of Lane One Q. Don't tell them that. Tell them a lot of guys start with a corn cob pipe, but you can also get an inexpensive briar pipe, and that might be a better choice for you. 
Maybe you want to try both. There's three, four broad categories of tobaccos. You've got aromatics, you've got English blends, you've got Virginia, Virginia Preaks, and you've got Burleys. And there's lots of stuff that, there's lots of overlap between those. You probably should sample from that. Don't don't say get a pack of this. Get, say, you know, sample from that. And, and try everything. And don't try it just once. Try it in your corn cob pipe. Try it in your briar pipe. Um, how, how do you pack? Show them how to pack. Don't tell them pack like a child, pack like a you know, whatever. Actually, say, you know, a little more pressure here. A little, and, and now draw through this. This is what it's supposed to feel like. Because that's what's important. Not how you get the tobacco in there, but how the draw is afterwards. I hope you get my point. I, th I feel like I'm rambling here a bit, but we all come at this from different directions. We all have different experiences, and we all got here in a different way. And that's great. And we all learn from one another because of that. You know, I tell you, oh, I, I, I pack only on the left side. I don't do that. That gives you an opportunity to try something new. And you might walk away from that saying, boy, that Mike's really an idiot. And that's fine. Or you might walk away from it saying, huh, I could adjust my packing method a little bit and, and this might work. That's good. But, but you got to do it this way. Is You're not doing it wrong. There is no wrong. That's That's really the bottom line. If you're happy. You're doing it right. So there is no wrong. Okay, there's one wrong. The only wrong in pipe smoking is to not smoke a pipe. How's that? Uh, well, guys, I, I hope you've enjoyed this little ramble I, I hope it made some sense i had a point i had a point and i i hope it came across ah uh, so this week back to work again oh we got uh, martin luther king thing on monday so i don't have to work on monday but uh, i'll be doing pipe work um we'll see how the week goes in terms of a wednesday video Friday night, we've got David Dorian Ross from the Virtual Pipe Club. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be quite a quite a nice chat. And, uh, yeah, we will roll on from there. So I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. Have a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.